Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about why I think you should be good to even the nastiest, even the most evil people. And not only why I believe that that's morally right, but also that that's the best thing that you can do for your life. And I know that idea of being good to people who are nasty to you is not a popular one. It's not going to be one that people want to hear, but I believe that if you do it, it'll make your life a whole lot better. Now I want to start off this video by saying that I am by no means any sort of moral authority, that I'm not claiming to be great and righteous about this. I mean, I know people think that I look like Jesus, but I swear I'm not. I'm the farthest thing from Jesus. And I'm, I'm talking about this as much as a reminder to myself as to anyone else, because I fail at this constantly, even though I know what I should be doing. Now I talked before in this video all about how selfishness uh, eventually propels you to do what's morally right because I believe that what is morally right and what is in your own ultimate best interest are actually the same thing and moral development is kind of a process of figuring that out, of recognizing that when you do the morally right thing then your own life gets better, that moral interest and self-interest are really one and the same. I remember one year when I was a kid, I was on a soccer team. I liked to play soccer when I was a kid, and I was always on one of those like little local teams every year. And one year, uh, I don't remember how old I was. I was probably like nine or ten, something like that. But I remember there was there was one kid on the soccer team who was just a total jerk. He was a jerk to everybody. Nobody liked him. Uh, he was always rude and hostile. And I think I had gone to Sunday school one day and they said something about loving your enemies or blessing those who curse you or something like that and I thought, uh, you know, I thought of this kid on the soccer team and, and I decided, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what they told me to do in Sunday school and instead of being nasty back to this kid or instead of ignoring this, this jerk kid on the soccer team, I was going to be really nice to him instead. I was going to I was going to go out of my way to be friendly to this kid. And I did, you know. I uh, I didn't really do much, you know. I just say, smile and say, hi, how are you doing? Something like that. Basically, just something that, that sub-communicated that you are a valuable human being and I don't hate you like everybody else does. And I remember I, I did that for not so long. I mean, maybe it was a few weeks. And the, the most incredible thing happened. This kid started being really nice, and not just to me, but he started being really nice to everybody. He completely changed. He did a complete 180. It was really interesting because I'm pretty sure that I was the only person that was being nice to him because, you know, he was a jerk to everybody, so everybody avoided him or was nasty to him back. But just me, just one person uh, being nice to him and, and not really doing much, just being a little bit nice really was enough to change his personality completely, at least in the context of that soccer team. And looking back on that, you know, I kind of, I kind of had that little lesson and then I forgot about it for most of the rest of my childhood. Uh, and then I, I remembered years and years and years later and I, I was kind of surprised at my childish goodness because definitely when I was a teenager and when I, when I grew up more, uh, I forgot that lesson completely and I started being really nasty to everybody that was nasty to me and I made a point of being nastier to them than they were to me. So, you know, they would, they would watch out for me and they, they wouldn't do anything against me. Really, I think it came down to pride that if my pride was hurt, I would lash out. Whereas when I was a child, uh, I, didn't really, I didn't really understand the concept of pride the way that, that I came to later on. And, you know, it's funny that, that in a way, uh, your moral development kind of regresses you back to being a child in some ways because, you know, as I explained in this video, pride is one of the most damaging things that you can possibly have in your life. So anyway, most adults think that way. They think that if somebody's nasty to you, you have to be nasty back because uh, you're, you're kind of defending yourself. You're, you're showing that you're not going to take any BS from anybody else. Because you're showing that, then nobody else is going to try to mess with you. And there is some truth to that. You know, I won't, I won't deny that the logic is there. But I think most people fail to separate the practicality of, of discouraging people from hurting you from the feeling of anger and desire for vengeance. And we can kind of see this in the way that people talk about self-defense. Somebody will say, oh, well, I hope that guy swings at me so that I can beat the crap out of him. It's all the emotional reaction. And, I, you know, I believe in self-defense, but if it's actually to defend yourself, right? So 
Uh, if, somebody, if somebody punches you and runs away, for example, well, to chase after that person and tackle him and then beat his head into the dirt is not self-defense, right? Because you, you were the one chasing him, even though he hit first, obviously that's wrong, but you're not defending yourself. You're, you're harming somebody out of vengeance. So think about whether your biting back is actually helping the situation. Is it actually preventing that person from harming you in the future? Or, which is perhaps more likely the case, is it just making that person mad, making that person feel wronged, making that person feel, especially if you're nastier to the person than the person was to you, they say they might even recognize that they did something wrong but then say, oh, well, I, I didn't deserve that big of an overreaction. So then they're angry at you, and then the situation reverses itself, and that person feels the need to get vengeance on you. And then that person gets his vengeance on you, and then you feel the need to get your vengeance on that other person, and it's just pain on top of pain on top of pain. You're constantly hurting each other. And, you know, there, there's these famous stories of, of the family feuds like the Hatfields and the McCoys where uh, somebody would kill someone and then the, the brother of, of the guy that was killed would have a vendetta against the guy who killed his brother and he would go kill that guy and then that guy's uncle would go kill the guy who killed the brother you know etc etc and it just balloons out until there's you know one death turns into a hundred deaths when you're seeking vengeance on someone, usually you think that you're doing something right, that you're dealing justice, right? But then the person who you get your vengeance upon doesn't see it that way at all, right? Because people don't really like to admit that they're wrong. So in practice, this strategy just creates a lot more pain and suffering than is really necessary for both parties involved in most cases. So you can see why being the person to bless those who curse you, to love your enemies, etc., is being the person to stop that cycle of suffering for yourself and for others. So if you can swallow your pride and do that and bless the person who curses you and don't chase after the person who harms you, then your own life is going to be so much better. And in fact, if you can go one step further than not retaliating and actually be nice to the person, well, that's probably the only way that this person's gonna feel any remorse for what he did to you, right? He's gonna recognize, wait, I was, I was nasty to this person and, and this person was nice to me. That's when the person will feel guilt. That's when the person will recognize that they've done something wrong and maybe have a chance to change their actions. See, we all like to think that we're better than all those bad or those evil people in the world. But for one thing, we don't even know if that's true now. Right, because you don't know what that person has been through, you don't know that person's life situation, and you don't know how you would react if you were put into the same life situation. You know, I just watched that movie, The Joker, and I really liked it. I, I know people were saying that it's dangerous because it's going to, going to incite people to violence because it kind of glorifies violence for people who feel downtrodden. And uh, I, I somewhat agree with that. But on the other hand, I think it's so useful for the rest of us to see that if we treat somebody horribly and continually pile onto that, well, at some point that person is going to get mean and hostile. And when that person does get to that point of being mean and hostile, then uh, nobody can be expected to like that person, right? And everybody's going to be nasty to that person. And the person is going to get more mean and more hostile until maybe getting to the point where he snaps and becomes a mass murderer like the Joker. I actually think it was an unusually mature thing for Hollywood to recognize that the, the, the bad guy has a story too he can be empathized with. How many school shootings and terrorist attacks and that kind of thing do you think could have been avoided if even just one person had reached out to that poor suffering soul who committed the violent act and offered friendship? None of us can say that we wouldn't do the same thing given the same situation. I mean, we can look at villains of history like Hitler and Mao and Stalin and say, those are horrible, evil people and I would never do what they did. But how do you know? I mean, have you ever been in their shoes? Have you ever been capable of even attaining that level of power that they did? 
The truth is that none of us can say that we are morally superior or inferior to anybody else because none of us really know. None of us have lived the same situation. So if you see somebody doing some nasty thing to you or to somebody else, ask yourself, if I was in that person's shoes, would I do the same thing? And the answer always is maybe. Even supposing that we could know that we are superior to those evil people. Say a, a voice came down from heaven that says, you're better than that guy. Even in that situation, that does not justify treating that lesser morally developed person with anything but love and respect. And the reason for that is that even if you're better than that guy is now, you weren't always that way. You had to get to your level of moral development throughout your spiritual life. And everybody starts out at a low level. Everybody is evil in the beginning. Everybody is a bad person in the beginning, and they gradually get their evolution as their spiritual life progresses. So really to point at somebody and say that person's evil, uh, I should be nasty to them, I should, I should feel superior to that person, is really the same thing as pointing at a two-year-old child and saying, oh, that child's stupid because he doesn't know how to read. I know how to read. I'm so much better than this child. Right? It, it just, it wouldn't make sense. Nobody would, would accept that because obviously you've had more time to learn. You have more experience. You're older than that child. And so if you can recognize this, recognize that you are never justified in being nasty to anyone, except if it's actually in self-defense, right? But even then, you should be as nice to the person as possible. You should try to minimize the damage as much as you possibly can. But if you follow the words of Jesus and you love your enemies and you bless those who persecute you, you will find that your life gets so much better because one, you remove a whole bunch of unnecessary suffering. Two, you make friends in the unlikeliest of places and you never know uh, how good and loyal a friend someone might be, especially if it's somebody who is nasty to everybody around him because life has been nasty to him, then you are his safe harbor, his refuge, because you're the first person to be nice to that person. Imagine how close a friend that person's going to be and how, how willing that person will be to have your back when you need it most. And then three, you're just going to remove that negativity from your life that's unnecessary. Have you ever noticed how much time and how much energy it takes to hold grudges against people and to hate people and try to seek vengeance against people? How much, how much of your life have you wasted doing something that serves no benefit whatsoever to your personal interests except to satiate your lust for vengeance? I know this because I'm totally guilty of it. I can think of how many hours of my life I've spent just fuming, being angry, and thinking about uh, all the ways that I was going to get back at this person or all the, all the nasty things that I was going to say to this person who had wronged me in some way. Imagine if I had put all of that time, energy, and mental effort that I spent trying to figure out revenge and, and uh, you know, which never happened most of the time. It was just me being angry, if I had put all of that effort towards something that was actually meaningful, towards something that was actually useful, right? Just that alone uh, probably would have made me a millionaire by now if I had just spent that time instead of being angry, instead of sitting around fuming towards making money, right? So if you can learn to bless those who persecute you, if you can learn to love your enemies, then your life is going to be so much better. As always, if you do what's morally right, it will serve your self-interest in the long term. So you can be selfish or you can be moral, but either way you should do the same thing. Now if you enjoyed this video, I think you'd also really like this video, all about how everything in your life, even the, the seemingly bad things, happen for your benefit. So check out that video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. And if you think other people could benefit from this message, then please share this video also.